Number one says, which of the following criteria always proves that triangles are congruent? Select all that apply. Um, first one says three congruent angles. That is false. Um, we can kind of look at an example here. Um, so if I just draw a triangle, let me kind of change the angles. Um, but so there's a triangle. And if I just kind of make this bigger or smaller, the angles are staying the same size. Um, but the triangles are not congruent. So that angle, that angle, and that angle are all still the same size, but the triangles are not congruent because the sides did not stay the same size. So A is incorrect. B, three congruent sides. That's true. That's our side, side, side triangle congruence theorem. Corresponding congruent side angle side. So this has the angle between the two sides. That is true. Corresponding congruent side side angle. When the angle is not between the two sides, that does not guarantee that the triangles are the same size. This one is actually produces an ambiguous case where there could be two different triangles um, with the measurements given. And then E says corresponding congruent angle side angle. And that is true if we know two angles and the side in between. Number two, here are some measurements for a triangle. So I like to just draw a triangle um, out so that I can label them. So I'm just going to draw, just sketch two triangles here. Um, so we'll just do A, B, C. And then another one, um, X, Y, Z. Then you can label the information onto them and see what they're giving you. So angle A, B, C. So this angle is 30. And angle X, Y, Z is 30. B, C is 6. And Y, Z is 6. So those are congruent. And then C, A is 4. And Z, X is 4. So Lynn thinks these triangles must be congruent, and Priya says she knows they might not be congruent. Construct two triangles with the given measurements that aren't congruent and explain why um, triangles with three congruent par parts aren't necessarily congruent. So let's go ahead and um, construct these a couple different triangles. And so I'll go with um, maybe centimeters here. So I'm going to make... Um, this first one, I'm going to put um, the six here. And then we'll do the 30 degree angle was attached to that six. Okay, so we'll, let's make the 30 degree angle here. And I'm going to do this dotted since the 30 degree angle is what they give us, not a side length here. Um. All right, then let me label some of this. So we've got this as the 6 and this as the 30. So now what we can do is um, we need to make a side length that's 4. Okay, so I was using centimeters. So if I just kind of rotate this, you see how the 0 is right on the edge there, and then I just have to kind of see where the 4 would line up with the side. So this would give me a triangle with a four right here. And actually, I'm just going to duplicate this um, measurement here of this 30 degree angle in the six side so that we can just move it over here and use it again. So I kept that 30 degree angle the same. So this is still 30 and this is still six. Um, all right, so what I have here is here's one triangle that we created. This had a 6, a 30, and then this was the 4. So now if I put this here, so this would be the exact same triangle because this angle stayed the same as this one. But if we look and we rotate this back, we also see that that 4 touches this 30 degree angle here as well. And so what that does is it actually creates us a second triangle that has these same exact um, three measures. 
So this gave us one where this angle here is obtuse and one where this angle here is acute. And that's called the ambiguous case since we were given two sides and the angle not between them. So there's sometimes two different triangles that could be created um, with the given measurements, not guaranteeing that those two triangles are congruent then. Number three, Jada states that the diagonal um, WY bisects, um, whoops, WY is bisecting um, angle ZWX, so up here, and angle ZYX. Is she correct? Explain your reasoning. And so this one doesn't ask us to actually prove anything, so we can just um, kind of write a little explanation. So yes, she is correct because the two triangles um, are congruent, and we can see that because they'd be side, side, side. So that means that the corresponding parts are congruent, which are the two um, smaller angles, the larger ones are being split into. So since um, the smaller angles are congruent, that means they, the larger angle is being bisected. So, I mean, you can certainly put actual angles to it, but if you want to, like you would in a proof, but essentially these two triangles are congruent. So these little angles are going to be congruent by, um, because they're corresponding parts of those triangles. So then that is definitely going to bisect both angles. Number four, select all true statements based on the diagram. Angle CBE, so CBE is this angle, is congruent to DAE. And that is going to be true because we would see that this, um, these two triangles are congruent over here. Um, and so then those two angles would be congruent. So that's true. Angle CBE, so CB. E, or sorry, CEB, so this right angle here is congruent to DEA, this angle here, and that's true because they're vertical angles. Segment DA, so this one here is congruent to CB, and that's true. We can see it marked on the diagram. Segment DC is congruent to segment AB, that is false. Those arrows mean that they are parallel, so E is true. And then line DA is parallel to, so this one is parallel to this one, that is false. Number five, we have a kite, angle um, WXY, so this one here, WXY is 100, or sorry, is 94 degrees. Angle ZWX, so this larger angle here is 112 degrees. Find the measure of ZYW, so find the measure of ZYW, this angle here, so this is the one we're looking for. Um, so we know we have a kite, so we can see that this diagonal is splitting it into two congruent triangles. And so we know that this angle here would also be 94 degrees. We know the total of the four angles in any quadrilateral is 360. So we can take and do 360 minus these three angles, 94, 112, and 94, um, so that we can find out the leftover angle or the missing angle is 30, or sorry, um, is 60. So that's for this angle here. And then we only want half of that angle, so we're going to take 60 divided by 2, and that will tell us that the measure of angle ZYW is 30 degrees. Number six, Andre is thinking through a proof using a reflection to show that the um, triangle is isosceles given that the base angles are congruent. 
So given that these base angles are congruent, he's trying to prove that this side is congruent to this side. And he's done that below. So let's help fill it in. So construct AB. So we're putting in an auxiliary line here. So auxiliary line AB. Um, so that AB is the perpendicular bisector of CD. So that's how we're defining it. Then we also know um, that ADB, so ADB, this angle, is congruent to ACB, this angle, because it was given to us. Then DB, so this segment here, is congruent to BC, since AB is the perpendicular bisector, so a bisector would split it into congruent pieces. Then angle what is congruent to angle what because they are right angles. So if this is a perpendicular bisector, this angle and this angle are both right angles. So angle DBA is congruent to angle CBA since they are both right angles. Triangle ABC is congruent to, so we've got triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABD um, because of what congruence theorem? So we see two angles and the side in between. So if I kind of just redraw this so we don't have everything on there, we saw this, this, and this. So that's angle, side, angle. So if we want to just shorthand that to ASA, we could. AD is congruent to what then? So AD is congruent to AC because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Therefore, since we now know that these two piece, these two um, sides are congruent, then that proves that it's an isosceles triangle. All right, then finally, number seven, um, the triangles are congruent which um, means that we've got a sequence of rigid, so which sequence of rigid motions takes DEF onto ABC? Um, so let me just kind of draw DEF here so we'll be able to move it. All right, so first one says, translate DEF using dire directed line segment EA. So we're gonna take E and, whoops, E and put it to A. So we wanna make sure that those are supposed to be matched up. So E and A are both in the middle, so they are um, corresponding parts, so that's good. Then it wants us to rotate D, E, F, so rotate this using A as the center so that D lands on C. So we wanna rotate this so D lands on C. D, oops. D is the first letter, C is the last letter. So these are not corresponding parts, so this is bad. So D landing on C would not be what we want. Um, so in B, it says translate using directed line segment EA, which we know is correct. Rotate A so that D lands on C. It's doing the same thing, having D land on the wrong point, so B is going to be wrong as well. C has us using directed line segment EA, which is good. Then it has us rotating so that um, D coincides with B. So this one has us putting D onto B, which is good. So it has us doing this. Then it says reflect across the line AC. So we reflect this purple across line AC is not what we want to do. We're going to want to reflect across the line that is um, lined up that the triangles are touching on. So we're going to want to reflect over AB, which is what happens in the last one.